I'm, uh, my name is Angus Selkeld. Um, I'm a core developer on the uh, Solometer and Heat projects, both of which are uh, in incubation. It's one of those other projects. And um, yeah, so Solometer is basically providing uh, support for billing. So billing has, has never been a part of OpenStack, and uh, it was not its primary problem, and it can be a bit difficult to sort out. Um, yet almost every OpenStack deployment needs some kind of usage information uh, that we can convert into something useful like billing or uh, analytics or whatever. So uh, this project grew out of a session from Nick Barset at the uh, ESSEC Decide Summit. Uh, so Nick was, is the PLT and uh, got quite a few contributions from a number of companies, Innovance, Canonical, Dreamhost, Red Hat, Intel, and others. Um, so we all hang out some OpenStack metering, and uh, we're in incubation basically, and hopefully we could move on to core. Um, so billing uh, is a three-step process. Uh, first of all, you've got to collect data. You do the metering part, and uh, provide that to the next step, which is rating. And here you get the usage information with your own uh, conversion, and you could basically calculate some kind of cost. It doesn't have to be financial. I mean, that's up to you. You could, you could convert it to anything you want. And then if you're doing billing, then basically you create the invoice, collect payment, etc. So Solometer does the metering part. So just collecting usage information. And you can use that for the billing, uh, also auditing, capacity planning, and uh, we've got plans for monitoring and alarming as well. And there's quite a bit of work that needs to be done for this last two, and I'll, I'll talk later about those. Um, so how do you get information into Solometer? So uh, there's user action. So if you're going to create a VM, and modify or delete it. Uh, Nova will send out events, uh, notifications on the AMPQ bus, and we basically listen for those. Uh, so there's auditing events as well that are generated, and we also do polling, because not all the projects do notifications of all the resources. So, uh, and there's other kind of information like CPU, et cetera, that you want more frequently, and so you, you poll for that. Uh, so actual meter types uh, is counters. I mean, this is very consistent with other statistics gathering tools. Uh, counters increase over time, uh, CPU time, or my age, it keeps getting bigger. Uh, gauge is some discrete value, like how deep is the swimming pool? And a delta is uh, what's the difference between now and the previous time. So as far as the architecture goes, uh, sort of simple. Um, we try to make it as pluggable as possible. Um, so this collector receives notifications uh, that we generate, and it sends it off to the data store. And the data store at the moment, we support uh, SQL Alchemy, which allows you to do a bunch of different database backends, and also uh, MongoDB. And uh, someone is busy working on HBase as well. Um, and this is the event listener I was talking about earlier. So uh, what happens is, you know, as you create events, uh, create resources within these uh, other projects, they send MQP events out, and we have a pluggable system that listens to each because they're not always in the same format. So we basically have little modules that understand each and convert those into a consistent format and send them to the collector and that stores that data. Uh, there's a compute agent, so that lives on the compute node, and it's a daemon, and it runs, and it sits in poles, the vert, or whatever vert agents, the verts uh, you have, and um, so it polls it, and you can define how long, but usually, I mean, it doesn't have to be a short time, it can be like an hour, a day, it's up to you, or it could be a minute, and basically, it gathers that information and sends it off on that bus to the collector. Uh, then there's also a central agent, which talks to the other 
projects, but in a similar way. So um, it goes and queries for things like what images are in use, uh, and how many, you know, from that you can say, well, how many people are using a particular image. So that's quite useful. And there's like volume information, you know, what's the IO on a particular volume, etc. And that also is all sent back, and that's consistent format back to the collector. And all of those, fro uh, from all of these agents towards the collector, all the messages are signed, because the assumption is that this is a way of billing. So you don't ever want someone to maliciously go and insert their own um, data in there. So it, there's a key, and basically each message gets signed, so you are confident that what you're building on comes from a secure place. And, um, so there's, we've got a REST API, like all other projects, and uh, that exposes all that data store. So you can essentially suck out of that into your rating system and uh, decide what to do with that and calculate uh, how much your, your billing costs are. And uh, of course, you don't have to do rating and billing. You can, you can just use that for capacity planning or uh, you know, uh, just seeing for your own information in your private cloud what is being used and how. Uh, and uh, so we have a plugin in development. I think it is either partially done or fully done. Uh, and as a part of the Grizzly release, we have also uh, added a user API. Previously, it was only expected to be used within the infrastructure and basically only ever used by rating systems. So we've now got a user API. So each user can see what their own usage is via Horizon. Uh, the REST API, this is some snippets. Uh, so the blue is the V1 API and we create a V2. And I suppose the main thing to show is uh, we've added quite a nice flexible query mechanism so you can search on any field uh, in the, the database and, and, pretty much, and there's an operation there so it can be equals, not equals, less than, etc. So you can then query all the way to um, metadata as well. So if you want to do queries like show me how many um, people are using image X, it's quite easy. You can search within the metadata and see um, what image is used on that instance and many other uses, use cases as well. So, uh, Grizzly, we've done quite a bit of work. Uh, projects become incubated. Uh, we've added the user accessible API and uh, policies and, and uh, integration with Keystone. Uh, there's some integration with Horizon and with the plugin. And uh, there's also a Swift agent as well. So you can gather uh, information about containers and uh, objects as well. And um, someone's added a SQL Alchemy storage driver, which is especially nice if you are um, using DevStack. It just makes it convenient and you're not overly stressed about huge volume. Um, there's multiple publishers. And the idea with that is um, if you are collecting all this data, you might want to use it in another, another, for another purpose. And basically, this allows you to plug in at quite a low layer and receive all this information and do whatever you want with it. Uh, it's also the multi-dimensions is part of that query that we, so you can query into the metadata, which you wouldn't, weren't able to do before. Uh, and we added units, and there's also a Python client, which didn't exist previously. Uh, so what we're planning, a couple, couple of thoughts are, uh, well, obviously we're hoping for a core projects, and uh, there's, uh, we've got plans to integrate Synapse, which was uh, Samsung's uh, implementation of CloudWatch. So we want to take that piece by piece and, and try and make an open stack API, but use their basic concepts uh, to try and create monitoring and alarming. Uh, and one of the drivers was that for that was the heat project, which uh, needed it for uh, auto scaling, so that you can create an alarm and get notified back with a notification when, for instance, CPU average CPU gets above a certain threshold, and you'll get alarmed, and you can go off and uh, trigger it, like a new instance setup. And uh, 
So also someone I think is quite busy with uh, H base. It, I'm not sure if it's going to get into Grizzly or H, so put an H. And uh, monitoring physical devices is also another thing that people are interested in and might well hook up well with the uh, guys who are doing bare metal. And uh, Rackspace seemed to be come along and are oh, interested in also joining the, joining the force. And they have their own requirements, so we'll see what comes out of that. Um, so as far as monitoring goes, um, a lot of people were concerned adding monitoring and billing, metering, how would that all fit in? They're quite different. And I think the main idea is we want to share code, but not necessarily deployment. So the database instances would be different, um, and the, collect the collectors would be different, and you'd be sending it probably via a different mechanism, not via assigned, like maybe by UDP or whatever's more efficient, because you're sending it at a higher rate. Um, and even the REST server could potentially be the same. And that would be quite cool in a, in a way. Uh, you could um, then essentially get alarming for uh, usage data, which would also be potentially useful. And uh, so the only thing extra is the actual alarmer, and that essentially queries the database and looks for those thresholds and to send off notifications once those thresholds have been met. So any questions? So there's a bunch of links. And at the bottom, I'm also giving a, a talk on Friday about heat, which is another one of the incubator projects. And we can see some cats. So the purpose of the monitoring that you're doing is to ultimately feed into a billing system, correct? Uh, so the monitoring system is basically, it's, it's Feature-wise, similar to CloudWatch. Okay, so it's user monitoring. So the, the, your cloud infrastructure would provide an API where a user could come along and say, I want to create an alarm on my instance if the following conditions match and get a notification back. But obviously you can use it internally in the system as well. But it is not necessarily the style of monitoring that's like millisecond. But you could sample at that rate and trigger an alarm, but the actual insertion into the database would be of the order of like a minute to five minutes, something of that order. And then the user can go and pull that stats up. I, I guess my ultimate question is then, uh, are you able to do any sorts of um, auditing or replayability of the uh, data that you have, the, the usage information you collect? Sorry, so again, okay. uh, So uh, you collect, in metric X, and then three weeks later, I say, no, actually, it was value, it was 42, not 40, or whatever. Can you verify that, or is that only real-time information there for the minute? Um, what use case are you solving here? Can you verify it? I mean, well, basically, at the point of inserting, the, the, that message signature is checked, so you know that it's a, it comes from a valid place. But if you know for a fact that somehow it was generated incorrectly, and it's, say part of your system went down, and actually there were instances that kept going and maybe it said that these instances got deleted and there's like this dead spot and you want to go back retrospectively, you're going to have to um, basically edit your database, adjust that back, you know, backfill that database in some way. At the moment we don't have a kind of API which says, well actually that's wrong and post to that or, or insert historic data points. Um, but the CloudWatch API uh, and, and probably the monitoring side of it does have a REST API where you can yourself uh, provide your own custom metrics. So if you're inside a VM uh, and you're just a user and you can essentially, if you've got like this really interesting app and you want to monitor it, you can and you can insert that. You can basically do posts to uh, the API, monitoring API and insert data points. Obviously, there's, there's authentication, and you need a key to, in order to, to do that, but you can. When uh, building is sensitive and involves money, the problem with, um, you know, getting it, the problem is getting it right, uh, or perhaps more importantly getting it consistent so the con customer sees exactly what you're charging them um, is 
is uh, Solometer designed in that way so that yeah. there's exactly one source of data and that uh, what people are going to see through um, uh, the, the yeah, well, definitely, I mean, it is designed up front. Uh, the initial use case was for um, billing. That was its exact first use case. So, um, as I said, the, the, all, the, uh, everything, all the messages that are received are signed, and so it's, no one can meddle with it. And uh, the, the, we can horizontally scale, but we use a message bus and basically a message gets pulled off and then it's not available for others to consume. So only one message will get to, to the database eventually. Uh, so you won't have like, you know, two messages saying, you know, doubling up your usage. I bet there'll be a lot of research into how to uh, compromise it and uh, uh, change my bill so that it's uh, credit now. How scalable is the polling architecture that you've got implemented when you're, say, scaling out to thousands of nodes? So, uh, well, the compute uh, agent actually lives on the compute node. So basically, there's one of those for each compute node. Um, and then the collector basically is scalable in the sense you, you can have that running. Uh, the database um, is central, but we suggest you, uh, you use something like Mongo that can basically scale out um, and uh, the what was I going to say um, the central agent uh, handles the, the number of nodes per uh, compute controller so you could have more and more of those too. Uh, you mentioned Mongo and some other sort of places where you can store the billing data. Um, how do you see it running in practice? Because I guess as an operator, you generally want to reduce the number of things that are operating external to the OpenStack cluster that you need to manage. And I guess Mongo would have to sit outside that if it's doing the billing for that cluster. So where do you see that going? Uh, um, you mean as far as different types of databases? No, I guess if you take Swift, for example, you run Swift and then you have to also run a storage service for the volumes, you end up splitting up your hardware a lot of ways. And if you then have to do that again for your Mongo cluster, you start losing a lot of the, the scalability and you start having to have a lot more hardware to get, um, to get sort of redundancy and reliability yeah. well, of, of I mean, clustering. Well, I mean, we have basically something like database as a service inside OpenStack that might not, you know, there is, we don't have anything essentially else to use. So we, we pretty much, you've got to store it somewhere. And I suppose, I mean, you could use Swift to splat the little messages out, but it might get a bit crazy. I don't know. We're good. <laughs> 